Hello everyone, I'm Evan Abrams, and in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about my top six tips for effective rotoscoping. Hopefully, we can make this a less arduous process for everyone. If you run into any trouble with the concepts that we're putting forward in this video, please let me know in the comments. I love to answer all the questions when I'm able. To cover a lot of the technical aspects, I'll be using After Effects, and specifically, I'll be using Mocha AE inside of After Effects. That's the version of Mocha that comes bundled with After Effects in your install, courtesy of Boris FX. Personally, I use the Pro version, but all of the concepts we talk about here will work with the Mocha AE plugin you currently have installed. So let's cut out all of this intro nonsense and get into the tutorial. It's kind of a word joke. We cut things out of the background. Eh, that's nothing. So my first tip and the first thing anyone should do when approaching rotoscoping work is to analyze your footage. It's very important that you take a critical eye to look over what you're being presented with and figure out what the problems are, where the opportunities are, and what you actually want to get out of the footage. Let's say in this footage we wanted to isolate the butterfly. If the goal was to get the entire silhouette of this blue morpho, which I think that's what it is, but correct me in the comments if my butterfly identification is wrong. If we want to get the whole silhouette, I'm talking antenna and everything, we need to scrub through and consider all of the shapes and how they change over time and what kind of challenges that's going to present us. We also need to look at the frames and figure out are there opportunities here. So for example, in this butterfly, it's a nice dark and blue, but then when the sun comes upon it, see so it gets nice and bright and we can really pick it out from the background. We could probably use a combination of keys, so luma keys, chroma keys, looking at color. We might even use things like the roto brush or, or the composite brush. These tools might help us to simplify a lot of the process by doing things automatically based on pixel information. But as we scrub through, we can also tell we're going to run into trouble especially areas like here where the darkness of the background almost matches exactly with the darkness as this wing gets into shadow. So all this edge detail will get lost. If that's something that we need to preserve, then you definitely need to roto this wing at the very least. So by scrubbing through and figuring out what exactly you're doing, what are the challenges, what are some shortcuts, that's going to save you a lot of time right there. Another thing you want to do is reduce the number of frames you have to work on at all. If, for example, you can work around difficult moments, for example, like when this wing tips totally to face the camera, this is a more difficult thing to deal with than these frames. So if we're able to clip out the first five seconds of this thing, it's gonna be a lot easier to roto this whole butterfly successfully. So finally, once you've determined the range of what you actually wanna be rotoing, which elements you need to extract, and how tightly or exact you need to be with your roto around them, then you need to start looking at what groups are here, what individual shapes, how are we gonna build up our mats, and we start to get down to the actual work of rotoscoping. So to do that in After Effects, I like to start by dropping Mocha AE on things. If you're like me and you have access to Mocha Pro, I would highly recommend using that, if only because it has a lot of tools in here that are specifically geared towards this activity. So my second tip for good rotoscoping is to break up complex silhouettes into easily manageable shapes. By looking at something like this entire butterfly and then considering to draw a shape around it, if we tried to use one single shape for this and then alter that shape over time, of course it would be very difficult. However, if we break this up into smaller manageable chunks that move independently of each other, we are much better able to use fewer keyframes to capture this entire fairly complex shape. For example, if we look at this butterfly and its wings, we might even say, oh, this wing must be one big shape because it pivots on its body here. It just folds along this seam down there. That's gonna be very easy. But you wanna go a little step further because you'll notice that the wing actually bends here. This is two components of a wing. So by correctly identifying that these two shapes should be independent of each other, it's easier then to rotoscope the whole thing by leaning on things like tracking or grossly deforming and skewing the points over time. Similarly, by treating things as their own unique separate shapes, it gets a lot easier to sort them out from each other. These antenna up here are totally different from the wing. Even though the wing overlaps them, this should be its own spline and this wing should be its own spline. Even though they intersect, they should always be separate. And while we're on the subject of complexity, 
Notice this ragged edge up here. That may be a complex line, and it'll take us several clicks to make that happen, because these points actually don't change relative to each other during the shot, it doesn't need to be broken down any further than this. It can actually be a fairly complex, jagged silhouette. We'll use other techniques later to make manipulating all of these points quite a lot easier. So this brings me to my third tip, grouping things that are stable over time. So while this edge may seem very complicated, you'll notice that that shape actually doesn't deform that much over time. So all of these points are going to be manipulated in more of a gross way. We probably won't have to manipulate each individual point eh, nitpicky all over the place because these things will remain together in this kind of orientation. Similarly, even though these legs are fairly complex shapes, they don't really move relative to each other. So we could pretty easily draw splines that follow the contours of this leg, being very generous with the number of points we do, because we know we won't have to manipulate them very much. They don't move very much relative to each other. So we're fairly safe to put a whole lot of points knowing we won't have to manipulate them. We're not making extra work for ourselves by making this complex shape because it doesn't move that much. But speaking of movement, Roto is made complex because everything that we want to draw boundaries around is constantly in motion. To take some of the lift off of ourselves, we want to leverage what kind of automated tracking we can squeeze out of our programs. So here in Mocha AE, a planar tracker, we can go ahead and use a spline, a rough spline, to simply track the shape and movement of this wing, let's say. And this doesn't have to be super accurate at all. It really just needs to generally capture this surface, this plane, so that we can reliably track it. We want to roughly tell Mocha what kind of a plane this thing is on. And so when that feels accurate, you can just take this layer, you should probably name them things like, like upper right wing track, get specific. And then you just go ahead and uh, let the computer do most of the work for you. So we're just gonna track it ahead. And as you can see, the grid is deforming in the way I would hope if it is indeed stuck to this wing, this plane of the wing. So we're tracking it forward and then we're tracking it backward. So now we have this reliable tracking information that is stuck on this wing, flap, flap, flap. We can now take something such as our wing information here, this more accurate outline of the wing, and we can say, you know what? Let's link it to upper right wing track right there. Boom, we've stuck it on there. And now as we go through, would you look at that? We're gonna have so few little updates to do because the tracking is taking care of most of it. These points are accurate on here because the track is dragging them along and deforming them. So rather than trying to manually do one, two, three, four wing segments, we could do one, two, three, four tracks and let the computer do the heavy lifting. When it comes to tracking, you really wanna seek planes. You wanna seek these groups that remain stable. Now, unfortunately, all of these automation tricks are not going to solve the main problem of rotoscoping, which is, of course, that most things are constantly in motion. Even with all of our excellent track in this very simple example, we still see the actual shape of the wing drifting away from our drawn shape of the wing. And the way we close that is by setting keyframes, and sometimes way more than we need to. So we always want to be trying to make this happen with the fewest number of keyframes possible. How we make these things line up, whether they're attached to tracks or not, is the same kind of principle. We want to go with the flow. So what I mean by that is you want to scrub through and search for the moments of movement and the moments of stillness. When are these things furthest apart? When do they stop drifting apart? So as I zoom in here, let's pay close attention to this point right here. I think that'll be the most egregious. Right here that these two things are on, when do they first start to separate? I think it starts to separate right around here. This is when the separation really starts. So that's like frame 162. And then when we move ahead, they start to separate. They're getting worse and worse. And around here, they don't get any worse than that in here. Maybe they drift a little bit later, but, but that seems to be a good plateau there. So we're going from 
around here, 162, there's a big change that happens and then it kind of plateaus out. So what you want to do is start at the place where the liftoff happens and start adjusting little points there. That'll cause a keyframe and just kind of tweak this, touch this up just a little bit so that it's a little bit more certain, a little bit firmer, a little more true to the line. And then you want to scrub ahead to when that plateau starts. The distance doesn't get any wider, or at least when the distance has stopped getting grossly wider. You want to look for changes of speed and changes of distance. So I think around here is a good spot. So now we try to adjust. Always make sure you look around the entire shape just to make sure everything is where you expect and hope it to be. Another thing you want to do is to try to adjust points. Don't do them singularly, but try to adjust them together as a group if you can. Makes the work a lot easier, grabbing a whole bunch of points and free transform them all around. Another thing that makes Mocha absolutely perfect for this kind of work. And there we go, we've got that touched up. Then you wanna scrub in between. And again, look for these times of great distance. Look for when there's great separation. Find the maximum point of separation and then pinch that one in. And that should line up the rest of them to fall in line because they're all be the average between those places. And so by identifying plateaus, movement, distance, figuring out when things start to lift off and when they start to settle is really gonna help you put in way fewer keyframes. My final tip, my sixth tip, is that you wanna work from large to small. You wanna work from simple to complex. And this goes for working in both space and time. Deal with the big objects first, the big patches, and then add details. Deal with your big movements, your big shifts, and then add details. Because in the real time crunch of doing this stuff, done is gonna be better than perfect, you wanna make sure that rather than having five beautiful frames and then nothing else done, you have a pass done on all of the frames and then go back and refine and make them better. One of the ways this is most exemplary is when you're making a complex shape like this one, you can always put in more points later. So we can always come in here, zoom in, and use this point insertion tool in order to add more levels of detail if we wish. Those points are then smoothed and averaged out over time with the existing keyframes. It's much easier to add points later than it is to start with way too many points, and then you have the hassle of shifting them all around for the entire roto. So always working from simpler to more complex is gonna be good. And then when it comes to things like movement, working from bigger movements and then refining all the little movements in between is gonna pay dividends every time. If you wanna think about this like traditional animation, this is going pose to pose instead of going straight ahead. And because our goal is to remain as on model as possible with roto work, then that analogy definitely holds up. Always remember, you can come back and do another pass and add layers of detail. And sometimes when you have the bigger picture, a lot of the little movements get lost anyway. So you really want to think about getting those first passes in and refining from there. Hopefully the next time you are confronted with inescapable rotoscoping work, you'll be able to tackle it quicker with more confidence and get it done very efficiently. So I hope that these six rotoscoping tips will help you sail through your roto woes. Thank you so much for watching this video and for spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams channel. I'll be following up this video with more technical based tips so we can get into even more nitty gritty aspects of the technology, of the software, of Mocha AE and of Mocha Pro as well. We use a lot of Mocha AE in here, the version of Mocha that comes bundled with After Effects. If you'd like to get your hands on the Pro version of that, there's a link in the description an affiliate link so I get a taste whenever you sign up and should you choose to commit to a full license use the promo code ECABrams15 and get 15% off pretty good deal if you have any questions about rotoscoping please let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out when I can if you want to get at me on Twitter I'm at ECABrams on there and on Instagram at ECABrams on there too thanks again for watching and I'll see you around the internet